so for diploma students also who are la late entered for you people also make sure while coming to college remember that you have to follow those sops okay standard operating procedure for normal students also make sure that while coming to college you wear the mask okay the wearing the mask and social distancing is must and should okay if you are not do following any of that you are, you will get have a strict punishments okay and fines will be also be there and make sure while coming to college have at least that covid 19 certificate if you don't have that at least you should get a message from the that you have given your sample and it has been yeah, going on for the processing okay and one more thing the letter from your parents the permission letter okay take that print out whatever i have given okay and that print out you have to uh, fill that form give it to your parents sign it and give it to us when you come to college okay those two things you have to do and make sure that you come as early as possible because in before jan 16th we have this labs have to be completed so we will uh, have few two labs for you people so that it will be batch wise so it will be easy for you to understand if we do slowly rather than last one week if you come and it will be hectic for you people to understand that's why we have planned to for you to come join us early itself okay is the slide visible pavan pavan sir yes, visible sir okay uh, so for all diploma students i am taking engineering geology okay so engineering geology is basically a theory subject where we are studying regarding the properties of the earth whatever the materials which are present in the earth we are going to study regarding that so the, we are currently in the third module okay uh first module second module and the fourth module have been already completed in the online session and it has been uploaded in the google classroom so you can go through that session videos and if you have any doubts you can contact me when you come to classes or you can just write it down those if you have any doubts in the google classroom itself okay so in this session today's session we are in module number 3 and we are going to study regarding outcrop dip and strike now here this is a uh, for you diploma students don't worry this concept is a new concept itself no interconnection between the topics okay so it, it is a general concept from if you uh, listen to this topic itself you can clearly understand the things okay so what do you mean by outcrop dip and a strike so one by one we will study what do you mean by outcrop dip and a strike so basically geology is nothing but the study of earth science whatever the material present how the surface of the earth looks like what are the things below the surface of the earth so we are going to study regarding those things now what do we mean by a outcrop so outcrop is an exposure of a solid rock on the surface of the earth so it is nothing but a exposure of a solid rock so in this sketch you can see so this waves and this indicates the soil what do you mean by soil soils are nothing but the small small pebbles or sediments okay of the rocks itself which have gone small small pieces here but this is one ro big rock formation itself now if any rock formation is visible to the surface it is called as an outcrop okay so in this sketch here it is there so this is the outcrop we can see the outcrop only in the hilly regions we can clearly indicate so this is the outcrop now okay these are the soil layers so this is one soil layer this is one soil layer this is the outcrop okay where the complete one type of rock should be present remember that this is one type of a rock okay any rocks which you see a granite it might be a sandstone it might be any other type now major thing here is when we call this as an out outcrop is when it is present to the surface itself if these rocks end up here below the surface of the earth then it is not said to be an outcrop okay when we say it as a outcrop remember that when it is visible from the top if you see from your top if you can stand on those rocks and it is clearly visible then only we call it as an outcrop okay in a certain regions of aluminum or soil may be spread for thousands of square kilometers and the bed may not be visible anywhere so in most of the regions you may not see this layers of rock so anyone has seen any layers of rock completely in your regions like this completely one layer of uh, rock formation so most of all of our region is completely with the soil itself yeah 
so he has like uh, 50 kilometers 25 km most of the region it is completely filled with soil but only in few cases we can see a solid rock formation itself projecting outwards it will be on the surface itself so in other areas however the exposure of rocks may be easily seen forming sides of a valleys caps or a hill in a flattened areas in a fields so where you can see this type of rocks okay in the hilly regions so in here so this is a complete one type of a rock from here to here okay if you remove this it is clearly visible from the top surface itself here it, there is as I said earlier so in most of the all the regions what will happen is that the soil will be there at the top okay not the complete rock formation so here this is the inclination so here it should be the surface to the surface so when we if this rock is exposed to the surface then this is called as the outcrop okay so outcrop of this rock same thing is given in this sketch so this complete region from here to here is an outcrop so here to here it is an outcrop it might be different types of rock it might be present okay so here it might be a sandstone or a granite anything might be present so it should be visible to the surface that is nothing but the outcrop now with respect to this outcrop and this rock formation there is two more terms dip and strike so what do you mean by dip what do you mean by strike so these three things are important outcrop dip strike so these are two definite quantities by which the position or the attitude of a body of a rock especially stratified is expressed so dip it is defined as the maximum angle of a slope of a bed or a layer of a rock within horizontal so with respect to a horizontal so this is a horizontal line with respect to horizontal how the rock formation has angle so this angle is called as a dip angle so it is a maximum angle of the slope of the bed or a rock layer so this is completely rock layer different rock layer will be present in this one it is expressed in the terms of degree of inclination so with respect to degree of inclination so angle and direction of inclination not just the value of theta so how much angle it is from 0 to 90 degree so with respect to that 0 to 90 and with respect to north south east west it has been clearly indicated remember that either it will be given like this north 30 degree so with respect to north 30 degree this outcrop uh, this rock formation has been inclined below the surface of the earth that is the meaning of a dip so the amount of dip is the angle between the bedding plane and the horizontal plane so this is the bedding plane so this is the horizontal so angle between them the strike is a geographic direction of extension of the layers of rock may be expressed as a direction intersecting the bedding plane with the horizontal plane so whatever this interaction you can see at the top so this will be continuing right so whatever interaction we can see that is nothing but the strike so it is perpendicular to the dip so this way so this is the inclination now see here this is the rock formation so this is the inclinations so if i want to show it in an easier way okay in an easier way what do you mean by a dip and a strike means so if i consider this complete uh, paper has a soil layer now this is one rock layer okay so if it is exposed to the surface now this is a surface so here this is the outcrop here next again the, there will be some soil layers so this is the outcrop now now in which direction so if the imagine that there is a soil layer here there is a soil layer here, here. and this is the surface of a rock which is visible to you uh, visible at the from the top itself and the surface itself it is not at the bottom now which direction this rock is inclined so it is inclined in this manner with respect to a horizontal so if i keep something has a horizontal if i keep this is a horizontal line okay with respect to this horizontal line what is the angle made so how much angle it is been tilted that is nothing but the dip now the strike is nothing but this perpendicular line in which direction it is there now as i mentioned earlier dip is not just mention of this angle with respect to horizontal what will be the angle okay so what will be this angle from my hand to this inclination of the bedding plane that is nothing but the dip now that angle is not with respect uh, only the angle is not given with respect to which direction 
whether this is in the north direction or whether this is in the south direction this inclination is present with respect to that we are defining it so here this inclination is with respect to the north okay so north some angle so this angle i have to measure with respect to the horizontal plane so whatever might be that angle that is the dip angle and the direction is the dip direction which direction it is inclined now the strike is nothing but the perpendicular line okay with respect to which direction it is been or the outcrop is visible on the surface okay so remember that the rock should be whenever we say it as an outcrop it should be visible on the surface now the dip and strike it might be present below the surface of the earth itself now this is the surface okay where the soil layers are present okay below which there is a rock formation like this okay now this rock formation if you want to calculate the angle that is nothing but the dip so with respect to horizontal so this angle with respect to horizontal what will be that angle that is called as the dip angle remember that so these three things is very important when you consider not just for this sem for next sem also we are going to study regarding this outcrop dip in the geology lab so this three term you have to have a clear idea in geology lab there are lot of problems in the next sem in the fourth sem where we are where you are going to solve the problems where we are going to find out the dip angle what is the angle of inclination what is the strike angle what is the length of that outcrop so so this things the problems will be there and you are going to solve it remember that that's why you should have a clear idea what do you mean by an outcrop so outcrop is nothing but the surface of the rock which is visible from the top okay it is in the visible the rock surface should be visible from the surface itself surface of the earth that is nothing but the outcrop so dip is nothing but it is the maximum angle of the slope of the bed or a layer of rock with respect to horizontal remember that then the strike it is a geographic direction of the extension of the layers of rock in which direction so these everything are given with respect to north east west and with respect to those direction we are giving not just the angle remember that direction also we will be giving may be explained as the direction of intersection of the bedding plane with the horizontal plane remember that so now you can get a clear imagination so here all this are soil remember that all these are soil which is visible in all the places which we can see so this is the rock formation which is visible at the surface of the earth so this is nothing but the outcrop remember that and this is the how it the rock below the surface of the earth is inclined now this angle is the dip angle with respect to horizontal plane what is the angle of inclination that is called as the dip angle now here this is the north okay so the dip is in the east direction so east so what is this angle if you calculate that angle that will be the angle let me assume it as currently as some 30 degree so east 30 degree is the dip so this is how we practically write it in the side so which direction if the rock is inclined in, if we say rock is inclined in the east 30 degree means with respect to east with respect to the horizontal it is inclined in this manner so this is how we indicate in the of side condition now coming to the strike so the strike direction is north south okay so this is the outcrop which is visible in the top okay of the earth surface there you have to see so here it is north south so this is the north marking here so north south direction the strike is there remember that so east direction direction of the dip is in the east direction okay so with respect to north south the strike will be there so if the same sketch okay same sketch if the inclination goes like this okay if the inclination goes like this then what will happen the dip angle will be here okay so the dip angle will be here okay the dip angle so now with respect to west you have to mention the dip direction and the strike will be same the strike won't change it will be north south itself this will be the strike line now the strike line only changes if Uh, if the north is uh, in change to some other direction so let me take this as north now okay for me it is easier to draw like this so now if this is the north then then only this if the strike will be changing so here the strike will be east west so this is how it is remember that so the 
remember correctly uh, with respect to north only you have to see which direction the dip and the strike will be there okay so this is regarding the dip and the strike concept so remember that this concept is very important not just for your examination so they are they have generally asked the definition of outcrop dip and strike what do you mean by dip what do you mean by strike or they have just told explain the uh, regarding outcrop dip and strike so try to draw this sketch okay or otherwise better you draw this sketch okay draw this sketch properly mark, mark the things and write down the definition of dip strike and outcrop remember that if you draw this sketch and if you properly write those definition which i have given in the slide it is sufficient now coming to the one more easiest topic rock quantity determination and rock structure rating so these two things which will rate the rock so different types of rock your people have already seen right so with respect to those rocks how would you rate it what will be the rock quantity determination okay rqd and rock structure rating R rsr so one by one let us see rock quantity this uh, designing index rqd is defined as the percentage of intact core pieces longer than 100 mm okay 4 inches in total length of the core so 100 mm is nothing but 10 cm you can write anything so 4 inches so if i consider one huge rock so now if i consider one huge rock so there will be continuation right so now due to where climate changes due to the weathering effects what will happen there will be formation of these joints like this joints it can be formed right so now what are the intact pieces the single single core intact pieces which will be there that will be called as the value that is nothing but rock quantity design index so the rock quantity design index is defined as the percentage of intact core pieces okay so it is nothing but the intact core pieces of longer than 10 10 cm so here in the sketch itself so in this whatever here it everything is in cm okay so you can write this in 10 cm okay mm 100 mm but if you convert it into cm it will be 10 cm so you have to check this is total one single rock itself remember that one single rock where there is interconnection see here the black thing which means that there is a interconnection now these things what you can see it is nothing but the joints cracks and the fractures okay so this gaps what is visible here are nothing but the joints cracks and the fractures okay so now this length should be greater than 10 cm then only we consider it so this is 38 cm we consider this piece of the rock okay so rqd is length of the core pieces which is greater than 10 cm divided by total length of the core run into 100 will give you the rqd value so for this it is 38 will be considered now here to here it is 17 so 17 is also considered why because it is greater than 10 cm now here to here we cannot consider why because there are lot of joints and cracks so the length is not considered remember that no piece which is less less than 10 cm now coming to here from this point to this point it is 20 cm henceforth we are considering it there is one huge piece we can consider by there will be for joints and cracks but this is not making sure that it is cutting into two pieces remember that it should not make sure that the joint rock is cut into two pieces like this way okay this is from the surface so if we consider this duster itself so if we consider this duster itself so these lines are not making this duster into two pieces right so in the other case if this this pen and the duster is a one full rock now due to some aberration there has been little gap and only small interconnection is there between these two then that is then we have to consider only this part as one length then to pen part as the second length that is how we are going to consider but there is a interconnection whereas the other cracks which you can see here are nothing but this type of grooves cracks in the sideways which are not dividing the rock into two pieces remember that so then this is also considered length equal to 20 cm 35 cm 
then here is a break see here there is no connection between this part to the this part so now what will the length of the core piece so the length of the core piece is 38 okay this part we have to consider 17 20 35 into 100 that is in the formula itself divided by 200 the complete length okay till the complete length we have to consider total length of the core if there is no interconnection also but this is a single rock so therefore till here okay till here we have to consider it will be 200 so rqd value of this rock it might be any type of rock it will be just 56% okay that is the value 56 is the value of this rock okay so hope that you people got an imagination what i have said regarding this rqd value remember that see the rocks sh uh, should not break from each other like in this case so it should have some interconnection a small piece connecting this part of the rock to this part of the rock okay now when the small piece is there right then we have to uh, not consider that part only from the top till that part you have to consider the length that is here in 38 cm Now, which all the length we have to consider, which is greater than 10 centimeter? Remember that. So that length you have to consider, and you have to add it up, okay, to get the length of the core pieces. Then divide it by the total length of the rock formation. Will give you the RQD value. So now, based on that RQD value, how will you classify the rock? So if the RQD value is less than 25 percent, it is very poor. So for construction on land. we cannot use this type of rock so it is very poor so 25 to 50 poor 50 to 75 fair 75 to 90 good 90 to 100% excellent so what do you mean by 90 to 100% means so any idea what do you mean by 90 to 100% 90 to 100% means the full length of the rock does not have any crack itself so this will be the total length yeah this will be the total length some 200 meters Uh, 200 cm if you consider this will be the total length and there won't be any joints or cracks so 200 by 200 will be equal to 1 into 100 is there so therefore it will be equal to 100 so it will be excellent so one huge rock you will get okay so if it is 75 to 90 means there are some pieces here okay something like this small small gaps will be there like this okay 50 to 75 again few more small small pieces so this is one piece this is the second piece third piece fourth piece so you have to measure this lengths now so that is how we have to do the rock mass classification and this table is important try to remember this okay less than 25 very poor 25 to 50 poor 50 to 75 fair 75 to 90 good 90 to 100 excellent now next rating is rock structure rating rsr okay is a quantitative method for describing quantity of rock mass that is appreciated the ground support so how much ground support it can provide the rock these are considered on the two general categories okay these are considered on two general categories geotechnical parameters rock type joint pattern joint orientation type of discontinuity major faults so based on this whatever you have studied uh, in the previous session regarding the joints faults and other things so joint pattern what will be the type of joint pattern what will be the rock type what will be the joint orientation type of discontinuities major faults shear and sand faults rock material properties of weathering and alteration so this value of rsr rock structure rating will depend on this geotechnical parameters as well as construction parameters size of the tunnel on what will be the size of the tunnel you are going to construct in this type of a rock direction of the drive method of excavation so depending on this two things your rock structure rating will be given whereas here depending on the rock itself the rock quantity design index was given but whereas the rock structure rating will given based on the properties of the rock as well as what type of construction you are going to do in that region remember that now the parameter a is the geology general aspiration of geological structure in basics of rock type origin igneous metamorphic sedimentary then rock hardness hard medium soft decomposed so whether the rock is hard whether the rock is medium whether the rock is soft decomposed on that basis you are going to classify 
then geological structure massive whether the rock is very huge slightly faulted or folded so whether the rock is folded so you have already seen the different types of folded rocks okay in the slides itself you have already seen moderately folded or intensively folded how the folding has taken place so this is parameter a so as i mentioned earlier so with respect to geological parameters you have to see check all this right so these are the parameter a which you are going to check first okay whether it is a igneous rock or whether it is a metamorphic rock or whether it's a sedimentary rock you'll check first then you'll check the hardness of that rock then you will check whether it is a folded or a faulted or any type of rock then geometry okay effect of discontinuity pattern with respect to the direction of tunnel drive of the basis so now we are going to consider the other things that is nothing but the disconnectivity so disconnect connectivity as you remember if you remember correctly then the pattern of the rock formation changes at that point okay so here if we, this was the pattern of rock formation like this some like this was there now all of a sudden from here it will be something different like this way it will be there so this formation changes will be there now so that thing you have to understand so the effect of disconnectivity with respect to the direction of the tunnel so if you want to construct a tunnel in this how will be this disconnectivity will be present so that is the second parameter which you are going to study in this rock structure rating now this is not uh, just a direct value here what you are writing with respect to these parameters you are going to check one by one the properties of the rock so first property is what you are going to check whether it is what type of a rock second is the hardness of the rock you will check then the whether it is a huge one whether it is a folded one that third thing you will check that is all this thing if you check all that three things it will be just parameter a will be completed in rock structure rating the second thing what you are going to check in the rock structure rating is this parameter b okay parameter b you are going to check so in that first you will check whether there is any discontinuity then the joint spacing you will check then the joint orientation you will check that is strike and dip okay then the direction of the tunnel is the third thing what you are going to check so the these after checking all these things also you have to check one more thing that is nothing but the effect of ground water inflow so whether there is any ground water which is present so the joint condition on the basis of overall rock mass quantity a uh, basis of a and b so with respect to a and b how much amount of rock quantity is present joint condition good fair or poor whether the joint is very good okay a small joint whether it is a fair one little bit big whether it's a poor means the joint has expanded very huge and all the water has infiltrated there so that uh, things you have to check amount of water inflow gallons per 1000 uh, feet of tunnel so these three things you have to check now here clearly understand that rock quantity design index is a value okay so this is a value some in percentage you will get whereas here rock structure rating is not a value it is the understanding of the rock on the basis of what first thing on the basis of its own property second thing on the basis of what you are going to construct if you are going to construct a tunnel on the basis of that tunnel you are going to check the properties so for that there are three parameters a b c so first parameter a is with respect to the its properties of the rock itself what type of a rock it is what is its hardness what is its geological structure then the parameter b is with respect to the condition of the tunnel on which direction you are going to construct a tunnel whether there is any discontinuity whether there is any joint spacing when you construct a tunnel whether there is any joint orientation that thing you have to see now the parameter c is dependent on both parameter a as well as parameter b how much amount of rock content is present you are already known by parameter a and b now in that rock content how much amount of ground water will be present which you have already seen in the fourth model regarding the presence of ground water okay so how much amount of ground water is present you are going to check it in parameter c what is the condition of the joint whether it is expanding year by year whether there is any expansion so how much amount of water is stored in those joints you are going to check that is the parameter c okay this is regarding the rock structure rating okay so with respect so these are the two important ratings remember that okay these two ratings are very important so these two ratings 
properly understand and write now the next important uh, topic is foundation treatment now what do you mean by a foundation treatment so all the foundations of any structure it might be dam or it might be a house which you are staying it should have a foundation right so that foundation below the foundation what it will be there it will be soil or the rock masses present right so now what do you mean by foundation treatment is that we are increasing the strength of the soil or the rock which is below present below the surface of the foundation so whatever the below the foundation there is a rock or the soil layer is a right so we are going to increase its strength so that it can carry the load that is nothing but your house weight or your building weight or your apartment weight or your construction of a dam for that that dam weight or that weight whatever it is coming on that soil right so it has to take care of that weight so to take care of that weight in many cases it cannot easily take care so we are providing some foundation treatment to it so what are the different techniques we will see one by one so dam foundation or rock for foundation treatment for dams reservoir and heavy structures so for normal buildings uh, like for a small house okay a uh, one story or a two story houses or a buildings we are not going for this foundation until and unless the soil is very weak for any other construction like dam reservoir and all for mega structures we are going for this foundation treatment remember that okay so the first technique is regarding grouting okay so what do you mean by grouting grouting involves injecting under pressure a good quantity of cement slurry with admixtures into rock or site so what we are doing so if i consider this as one rock okay there are now joints below the earth surface you have to imagine so these are the joints which are present now over this rock you are going to construct a building now so whether it will be stable no right because of this joints the rock has already lost its strength right that's why there is a formation of joints remember that because the rock has lost its strength and capability to take the load the joint has formed now if you want to construct any structure over this what it will happen it will become unstable and the structure might collapse so for that now what we are doing is we are grouting it grouting means under high pressure a good quantity of cement slurry cement slurry means cement water and fine aggregates that is nothing but the river sand nowadays we are using fly ash and other uh, quarry sand uh, other things m sand we are using in different region so these three things mixed in a proper ratio and we are injecting here so we are putting cement paste in this regions okay cement paste like this completely filling this joint so now this rock will has a got its strength now you can construct any building over this that is what is the first method that is nothing but grouting remember that a cement slurry means cement water or fine aggregates three things will be there okay coarse aggregates won't be there the huge stones won't be there only small small fine particles of sand will be there remember that okay it might be now uh, river sand is not used it is m sand which is been used okay so those paste in a high pressure it will filled in this all these joints so once it gets filled the rock strength increases then you can construct any building or the foundation over this so the cement and the admixture carried deep and all through the minute cracks so what it should make sure that so if this is the so this is the top view now okay so from the top you are seeing okay now this is the inside how the crack has propagated okay now your cement and slurry should not fill till here okay it should fill completely till the total depth of the crack itself till here it is crack is there then till this depth it should fill now the second crack is might be till here itself till that region your all the cement slurry should get filled up that's why we are injecting it with the high pressure okay that's the necessity why we need to inject it with the high pressure okay so that it fills the minute crack whatever the small crack if there is a small crack here like this then it should fill this crack also the, the cement slurry where the fill set harden and virtually seal all types of opening in the rock so once it gets filled it gets hardened right cement gets hardened and everything gets filled up so what will happen so there all the cracks and joints gets filled up it will become hardened and virtually seal off all these places 
so the grounded rock becomes impermeable so it will become impermeable means it does not carry any water or any other fluid strong so this will become strong free from any defect so now this rock we can consider it has a free from any defects if there is any joint okay if there is any joint in like this and the grout is filled till here and there is not filled and there is still empty space then it is not called as a uh, routed one so you have to make sure that full region is filled okay then only we say it as a no defects will be there free from defects associated with earlier planes of weakness and open spaces so with respect to earlier weakness and open spaces now the rock is been completely strengthened up now you can construct any type of structure that might be a dam it might be a reservoir it might be any huge apartments anything you can construct in this type of rock formation now so this is the first method remember that that is nothing but grouting so in grouting th uh, three main operations are involved first one drilling of bore holes at a properly selected position so how first thing to uh, make sure that the grout right reaches that cracks and uh, joints so if so now if we can say that so this is the rock formation this is the ground level okay this is the ground level now now below somewhere there is a rock here okay there is some rock here now in that rock somewhere here there is a crack so like this there are joints now first thing what you have to do is that you have to construct a bore holes like this holes you have to construct okay holes you have to construct so these are the holes you have to construct okay by different exploration techniques you will get to know where are the joints remember that two methods i have already explained to you that is nothing but electrical resistivity method and seismic method you will get to know where are these joints okay with respect to those joints you are going to dig up bore holes okay bore hole position are selected properly with predetermined diameter so this diameter at the top you have to correctly indicate okay then and depth and angle what should be this angles everything you have to correctly measure it usually a number of bore holes are to be dug see here where are there are cracks and joints till their regions you have to go on constructing the bore holes so these are the bore holes 1 2 3 1 2 3 are the bore holes now here are your cracks and joints in the rock dug in the grouting program the number going has number of hundreds so even hundreds and even thousands you have to go on digging this borehole remember that inside because it will be acres of land right so their aggregate depth may be exceed thousands of meters so now if you consider how much depth this borehole has gone it will be thousands of meter remember that so preparation of grout sorry so this is the first step now of grouting now what is the second step it is the preparation of grout slurry this is done separately by under expert guidance so now the mixture of that grout the cement mixture right you have to in, the, in presence of an expert guide you have to prepare it it involves thorough mixing of pre calculated quantities of cement if needed and sand and other desired add mixtures so cement and sand and other add mixtures like asphalt sawdust and chemicals like sodium silicate calcium carbonate so these things are added to increase the strength of the cement slurry remember that so these things if you add and make a prepare a grout slurry ashes and even gravels can be used in ingredients of grouting depending on different situation different conditions which are the materials present in those location you are going to use this different materials to prepare the grout slurry so this is the second step now what is the third step third step is nothing but injection now what we have done we the uh, so this is below the surface of the earth this is the ground level so somewhere here there is a rock okay now you have to construct a building here this is your building okay now you have to construct a building there will be foundation like this below the surface of the earth now to make sure that the due to this joint and crack the building should not fall right first thing what you have to do before constructing the building you are digging a bore well like this okay you are digging a bore well then you are preparing that slurry in the expert guidance then the third step you are going to inject it in this all this bore well you are going to inject that slurry now the slurry is injected in the ground through high performed injection pipes so you are putting pipes here okay you are putting the pipes in the inside those pipes you are going to pump the slurry inside 
generally under high definite pressure so remember that there will be pressure intact on the basis of pressure applied grouting is differentiated into low pressure grouting pressure below 10 kg per centimeter depending on the pressure itself there are different types of uh, injection first one is low pressure grouting then high pressure grouting above 40 kg per centimeter with that much amount of pressure will be there in some cases grouting might be done in two stages piercing the solid grouted zone made earlier once again to achieve maximum impervious strength so first as i mentioned the really easiest one so you are going to inject all the grouts remember that with either a low pressure or a high pressure okay then we can do it in a two step one step what we will do we'll grout it till the half a crack okay then again we break it this uh, joints again we fill it up so that it will become more strengthened that is what we are going to do in some cases okay in different types we are not just in one stretch we are not going to fill that joint so if i consider this as a one joint right now in one step we are not filling this with the grout we'll fill it till some region okay and we'll make sure that it gets a little bit harder once it gets hardened we'll try to break it by explosion and anything then again we are going to put slurry here okay so that there is a interconnection and good bondage to achieve maximum strength and imperviousness remember that so that there won't be any cracks and the further conditions so that is what we are going to do in few of the cases in the most of the cases if the joints are very small then at one stretch itself we are going to fill it with a slurry if the joints are very huge then we are going to go with this two step method remember that so this is regarding the grouting one so this is the first type of foundation treatment one is grouting we are using cement slurry now let us go to the second type rock reinforcement or additional support provided to the rock structure to improve its stability and load carrying capacity uh, capacity so rock reinforcement utilizes the inherent property of this rock structure to behave like a self supporting single unit so using the rock its own property what it is going to do is it is going to support so rock reinforcement can be found in the form of rock bolts rock anchors and rock dolls so one by one we are going to see rock bolts so in this sketch have you people seen anywhere in this type of sketch is anyone if anyone has seen you can unmute yourself and see. so this type you can see it in a hilly region hilly region if you gone by a train itself in the when the hilly slope comes you could have you would have seen this rock bolts like this the mesh will be there and this type of bolts will be kept so this is nothing but the rock bolts so this type of rock reinforcement is mostly held with the end of a bore hole okay these are steel rods which are grouted into rock now with cement slurry what we are going to do we are going to grout the uh rock bolts okay this uh bolts we are going to put provide with the grouts remember that once the anchorage is attained it is tensioned and the compressive forces is induced in the surrounding grout so once this strength is been attained remember that we are going to pull this we are going to apply forces on this bolt so that it make sure it is too strong to enough okay to increase the strength so that is what we are going to do so this is nothing but rock bolts now rock wells is same so here bolts are provided see in this sketch and meshes are provided to make sure that the rock strength is higher now in the second case rock wells the passive type of rock reinforcement which required ground displacement for its activation so we are going to displace the ground so when the disconnectivity in the rock must are subjected to displacement the doll experience both shear and tensile stresses so here what we are going to do is that we are going to insert the this uh, bolt okay that is nothing but the rock well okay inside till the full length okay so the threaded regions will be there so this is the head of the rock theoretical excavation line so this till here we are going to excavate spherical washers so these are washers okay hexagonal nut so this is the nut design line so this till here it, the projection will be there okay 6 8 inches 76 in the bearing plate so bearing plate we are going to provide so that it should be stable so if you have seen any bolt net connection so there will be these things one will be the bearing plate one will be the washer one will be the net so then the bolt is inserted to the full length of the length of the rock well okay so it varies full grout it should go so with then remember that in the sides there will be grouting okay 
so these are the grouts see here full grout so here also here in the outer surface only grouting will be provided in the rock bolts but whereas you have to the full length of the bolt or the dwell the grouting is been provided remember that so threaded steel bar so this is nothing but the steel bar itself remember that the dwell is nothing but the steel bar itself with uh, surrounding the steel bar grouting is also done that is nothing but the rock dwells now the last one is rock anchors this method of rock reinforcement makes use of compressive uplift forces so using the compressive forces compressive means so to push using that forces we are going to anchor the rocks in the ground stabilizing any structure of rock masses preventing in the ground and underground these are high tensile strength bars okay these are pre tensioned by anchoring the ends of the bore holes the rock anchors can be either untensioned anchors and tensioned anchors an untensioned anchors is a passive type of rock reinforcement which develops tension with deformation this support increases the increase in development a tensioned anchor is an active type of support completely intermediate after intermediate installation failure of rock masses due to shear is resisted by rock anchors so here we are going to provide the rock anchors so here again we are going to provide the steel okay steel bars and everything what we are going to do is that instead of directly inserting a steel bar we are going to extend it we are going to apply the pressure on the steel bar then we are keeping it in a region where there is joints and cracks in the uh, rocks so that it will be act as a rock anchors okay so it will be twice one more thing what we can do you can insert the steel bars inside the rock then you can tension it you can pull it so that the strength increases then uh, uh, by applying the weight or the load on the rock itself you can tension it so that it can carry those loads and it increases the strength of that rock so this is regarding the rock anchors and everything so here remember that foundation treatment two types will be there one is with respect to the uh, grouting how to do the grouting what is the procedure second one is due with respect to rock reinforcement in that three types will be there remember that so these two questions are very important what is the different methods of foundation treatment in that one thing will be definitely asked now an interactive session will be there with you people regarding the topic of selection of sites so first one how to select a dam site so now is the slide visible right anyone kiran power anyone in sir okay so now you people have to tell me in this sketch there are three sketches here so these are the different types of rock formation the dotted line uh, these dots this the dash dash lines this type of lines indicates different type of rock or a soil layer okay so now what type of a rock layer or a soil layer below the surface of the dam is good whether a type whether b type whether c type so here are your forces just a common understanding let us see from this sketch how much you can understand so write down the answers in the chat box so again for uh, diploma students who are not attended my class remember that so you have to write something in the chat box in the so that it will be considered as an attendance for this session one will be attendance uh, for attending the session second will be the attendance when you answer these questions so whether a b c will be which type of formation below the surface of the dam is good which site you will construct which site you will consider so everyone is writing only one answer why there might be two possibilities also two ma s there are others and if you have written sami which is better out of three, three only one is not maybe two also is possible two or three also will be it good which is the one one or any three also you can select according to is there anything best
so most of you people have written a itself so let me explain so here remember that a is good but c also is also better okay so here in a condition okay so in the condition of a in the this condition the all the planes are horizontal so therefore what will happen the loads gets easily distributed below the surface so this is the stable one okay this is the stable condition whereas in this condition what will happen when you apply the loads so this is the resultant value right so this is how the load will be there right so due to this load what will happen if the bedding plane is in this direction what will happen the dam might slide down in this manner itself okay the slide down might take places so it is unsafe so you have to check the zone condition so this is unsafe if you are constructing the dam in this situation it will be unsafe now coming to this one now this is also safe okay this is the best out of this three a is the best but this is also the best why because see the resultant is in this direction but the uplift pressure due to this angle the loads it will be in this manner okay so if we this rock has to slide remember that it will be sliding in this direction but the force is in this direction so therefore this is also safe condition remember that this is a stable one this is a safe one this is the unsafe condition so if you want to construct a dam so you have to select this one first if not possible then you have to construct a dam so this will be the angles then you have to change the direction of the dam itself right if not you have to select another location so that is how it is okay so this is the safest condition now here which one is better figure 1 or figure 2 which one is better yes write down in the chat box which one is better figure 1 figure 2 for a construction of a dam one or two so see the sketch properly figure 1 has a shear zone under the dam unfavorable so effects of folding on the dam sides yes which one is good only kiran has replied what about others so if you construct a dam in those location below the earth surface this is how it looks like so whether this is good or this is good don't think about the dam itself you can think about the your house itself if you want to construct a house a big huge house and there is a load so we on which uh, site you will construct so whether in this condition sketch bigger one or in this yes only three people have replied there are others raksha nabi saab dheeraj so if you are not understanding anything you can ask me and stop me ask okay unmute yourself and uh, ask okay which condition is better so most of your people have written one and few people have written two see these two conditions are not at all favorable this both conditions are not at all favorable so if you want to construct a dam in this condition your dam will be a total failure until and unless you are going for some foundation treatment both conditions are not at all favorable so if you want to construct a dam in this condition your dam will be a total failure until and unless you are going for some foundation treatment okay why so if there is a shear zone or a dam this shear zone is present like this then if you construct a dam so due to this extra additional pressure of this dam and the water here what will happen is that there will be sliding so what will happen is this this will be sliding in this manner that is what this arrow mark indicates once there is a sliding what will happen is that the dam will collapse now in this case that is the folding one there are folding rocks right the folding has happened why because of the uh, loss of strength of the rock itself right because the rock has lost its strength andre idu dam construct madidage rock enu thana strength properties anna lose maadkondide right adike idu folded agid karanadinda so now if you construct a dam over it what will happen it will collapse so that is what it is showing in this direction the dam will collapse okay so here all the application of this resultant will be in this direction now it is already folded and it is already going down the rocks it has now when you have extra overweight what will happen it will come down okay there will be collapse so these two cases are also unstable so you have to properly check 
so in this location you have to select another site itself so if there is any shear zone or you can go for the those foundation treatment cases now at least you got an idea right with respect there is a horizontal if there is inclination if there is a fault or a joint it might be a joint it might be a crack anything it might be if there is the present remember you have to go for foundation treatment or you cannot select that site if there is a folded rock also you cannot construct the dam in those location now out of this a b c d which one where you going to construct a dam at least now if i guess you people should understand something and write it proper answer in this a b c d which one is the better one and which one is the worst one both you have to tell me okay in this a b c d diagram which location is good for a dam and which location is worst for a dam both things you have to write it down Let's write down in the chat box which is good, which is bad in this out of four. Let me see how much you have people have got an idea now. In the first case, it was horizontal. In the second case, there was a fault as well as there was a folded type of rock. Now in the third case, the inclination is there. That's it. That's the only change which we can see. Now which site will you select for a construction of site? Which will be a good site? whether it will be a whether it will be b whether it will be c or d which site will be worst one as yes, write it down which site will be the worst so most of you are written good one okay so write it down yes where are other people So are you people there or not? So use your imagination. Using this sketch, see, when you draw a sketch, remember this arrow mark also indicates something, right? So with respect to this arrow mark also, make sure you clearly, see, uh, when you see any sketch, make sure you go for the details, okay? So details are very important. So in this also, see the detail. The detail is nothing but this. reaction how the load is acting in here this arrow marks are the details which means that if you construct a dam here the rock mass might slide here so if you construct a dam in this way due to this folding of the rocks in this pattern it might come down it might slide down that is what it indicates that why that's why you have to check this arrow mark properly now check this arrow marks and at least write down correctly the answers so which case is the best one which case is the worst case out of that four so a is good b is best d is worst s so here the best one is a and b okay both are good now here we are not thinking only about the dam okay we are also thinking about this water how will be the flow of water now if the bedding plane is in this manner okay now the bedding plane is in this manner now remember that here all the water gets infiltrated right due to infiltration so it will be behind the dam itself okay behind the dam itself therefore it is good you don't want a water to come outside from the dam right so it will be inside the uh, dam itself Th therefore it is good okay in the second case this one is the a uh, stable and a good condition remember that a b is also better okay b is better where the water will be just infiltrated and does not much affect the dam remember that whereas c is a safe when you construct it okay okay when you construct because this bedding place normally don't they get gets down but because you are going to provide some foundation treatment and everything but what will happen is over the time as the time goes on due to this infiltration water will come down below the surface of the dam like this way in this pattern it will come down so when you skate when when water comes down in this pattern what will happen it will reduce the strength of this region so once it reduces the strength of this region it will drive the dam will be unstable and there might be a collapse situation also this is the worst case scenario again due to its own weight it might slide down the dam if you that 
if this soil has no strength now as the because of this heavy angle what will happen is that water will uh, infiltrate and come down and will come out from here so this might takes places in rainy season when there is a heavy rain and the dam is completely full the infiltration rate is also very high water has to go somewhere right water has only one thing to do it has to flow from one part to another part so it will come down so what it will do it will make sure all these regions will become weak so due to that dam might collapse or instability will be there otherwise all the water will flow and come out from the here so the main purpose of uh, constructing the dam is to store water now all the waters are flowing down and coming out that is it does not serve the purpose also so this is the worst case scenario remember that okay this case is fine but over the years over on 30 years after 40 years what will happen this might be a situation might occur that the water might have uh, weakened the zones below the surface of the earth remember that okay this is the better case and this is the best probable case out of this four remember that so that is what you have to see okay so this is how you select a site okay this is how you identify or select the site a dam site so here i have not given any explanation in my side i will be uploading the notes regarding these topics in your google classroom there you can see the points and write down those points in the exam remember that so this sketches whatever i have taken it's from the uh, textbook okay parbin singh textbook and that textbook images are i have made a pdf of that so i have uh, uploaded it in a google classroom there you can check and the one more last topic in this session is regarding the tunnels so where you are going to select uh, go to construction of tunnels so tunnels are the passages underneath the earth surface which are also constructed with some specific purposes why we are going to construct the tunnels one is for transportation purposes second one any other reason why we going to construct tunnels yes anyone unmute your self and say why you are going to construct a tunnel yes only for transportation purpose we are going to construct a tunnel any other reason we are going to construct a tunnel we are going to construct a tunnel if remember that one is a horizontal tunnel below the hilly region second one we consider this another one is for mining and all we construct a horizontal tunnel that is nothing but we call it as a shaft okay when the excavation proceeds in a vertical direction this way and it is open to the surface at the top is called as a shaft this is nothing but a shaft this is also a tunnel itself okay where here we are going below the ground surface this is the ground level below the ground level we are going to excavate that is this is also a tunnel but it is called as a shaft if it is a horizontal we generally call it as a tunnel so why we are going to construct a tunnel we are going to construct a tunnel because for transportation purpose it might be for the purpose of uh, what for the connection of pipelines for water transportation we are going to construct a tunnel we are going to construct a tunnel for other different purposes for fiber phone line connection we are going to construct a tunnel for the different reasons so these are the shapes generally we see these shapes in the construction of the tunnel okay d shaped tunnel circular section on horseshoe so these are the general type of pattern we see in construction of the tunnels so now this is how the tunnel looks like below the hill surface now this is a hill there are different layers of rock soil formation so a typical geological profile one is the limestone so one is the first one is the limestone so here these are the limestone type of rock which is present second one is a volcanic type of rock so here volcanic type of rock which is present third one is a clay so here this is the clay layer fourth one is a quartzite so here fifth one is a sandstone this one dikes so dikes is a igneous one hope you remember that ba so this is the dikes arsenitic condition so water will be flowing out in this condition ac okay so then b is the borehole so these are the boreholes which you are going to construct to check the uh, water conditions remember that okay so now here this is how the tunnel looks like when you construct below the different regions right it will pass through different layers of rocks soil sands it basically look like remember that okay so entry and exit this is how much below the surface of the earth it has been clearly mentioned 
now this is a just for your idea imagination how the tunnel looks like now this is the case now so these are the different blending plane 1 2 3 so now which case is better a situation b situation now here safe situation and unsafe at the top is written but what is the other difference we can see which situation is safe let's write it down few more minutes okay so this is the last topic which situation is safe a situation is safe or b situation is safe yes which is be better a1 or a b1 type of tunnel opening which tunnel opening is good a type or b type so the safe and unsafe situation at the top is for different criteria i'll explain that but which one is better a1 type of construction that shape is better or b1 as yes, write down are you people listening or not as pavan rakshan few moments okay i will end the session mind up as nabi saab pramod dheeraj so most of you people have written b1 so here these two are also good okay now here what basically is happening see here now this f of condition tunnel top okay is safe when there is a this thickness of the bedding plane is very huge now this thickness is very huge now if i consider this duster itself okay if i consider this duster itself okay now this duster has a very high thickness right now if you want to construct a tunnel here below this like this now if you just uh, make it like that a uh, rectangular one at the top it is sufficient why because this complete part will act as a simply supported and it won't come down fall down okay because of that now if the thickness is very less if the thickness is very small and if you are providing a rectangular type of shape at the top of the tunnel what will happen it will collapse because of the small thickness now here basically in this slides remember that the thickness is very important based on this thickness you have to select the type of the tunnel whether you are selecting a tunnel top as a rectangular one or whether this type of shape when there is there is a huge thickness like this way then you are going for a rectangular one and you are going to end it when the say, another layer starts so here this complete layer itself will be stable one and due to this and this side the it will be acting as simply supported one okay in some you might have studied what do you mean by simply supported okay due to which it won't collapse now if the thicknesses are very small okay unsafe at the top so if you construct here like this a rectangular part here itself what will happen this is the small thickness so all this from this layer all it will collapse down okay that's why we are going for this parabolic or the semi circular type of or arch shape tunnel remember that okay arch shape tunnel is we are going when the thickness of the bedding planes are very small remember that so this is the first criteria so this both you have to select okay these both are a stable condition when this is a condition is safe situation when the thickness of the bedding plane are very high when the thickness of the bedding plane are very small you are going for the arch type that is the conditions now in here so with respect to dip and strike the first one is the tunnel is going through the dip so here see the angle all the rock inclination here will be there this is the best stable case why because it might go through a different layers of rock but here at least you will get to know what is the strength of this regions and you can construct based on that itself okay when it is uh, going parallel to the dip this is first case is parallel to the dip remember that this is the good condition now if it is parallel to the strike line when the tunnel okay when the tunnel is parallel to the strike line okay then what will happen is that see here all the inclination of the rocks has come and hitting this 
entrance now what will happen is that there will be different strength for these things right there will be different strength you have to take into criteria of all these different things into condition and it will be lot of hectic thing okay so this condition try to avoid it in the site so if this condition if you get it then it's well and good which is parallel to the dip instead of going for the parallel to the strike and here at the starting point itself there will be instability due to the different types of rock layers present okay here remember that at different location you'll get different layers but at the starting itself and from all the regions you will have a different different layers at all point in time it will be very difficult to construct a tunnel in those regions when the tunnel is parallel to the strike line remember that now one more condition so here remember that the dip were inclined okay but here the dip is in the perfect way so this is also a good one so this type of construction you going for arch one okay so tunneling in a steep inclined strata with parallel to the dip so here here also we are going to parallel in the dip condition itself where it is a good condition so easily you can construct a tunnel only thing different layers of rocks will be there different the different hardnesses you will get so we have to uh, dig, uh, drill the rocks that's it whereas here in the strike case there will be different hardness at different points itself so it will be difficult for you for constructing a tunnel when the tunnel is parallel to the strike line remember that it is easy to construct a tunnel when it is parallel to the dip line remember that now again a strike condition so here what would happen is that from the sides also due to this uh, angle all the particles of the rocks or the soils may come up end up in the tunnel itself it's a unsafe condition remember that so if the tunnel is passing like this in a st uh, strike region okay this is the dip will be like this remember that okay in which it is passing through different strikes so here you can see so what will happen is that if it is passing like this then it will be completely unstable okay so, the, so here and this tunnel top so from this type of rock there will be some other weight from here this will be different weight so there will be different pressure variation will be there due to which the tunnel might fail otherwise due to this uh, layers coming inside it will uh, all this due to that pressure it the all the rocks and soil may come inside the tunnel itself so in all these conditions you have to go for that foundation treatment that is nothing but rock anchoring those things you can see in the tunnels so if you have gone inside any uh, railway tunnels so if you have seen the bedding planes of the rocks and everything so there you can have uh, could have seen the rock anchoring the rock dwelling system other system you could have seen it okay so once if you possible if there is any railway tunnel near your houses or, or near your location go through go inside it and see the proper identification of these things remember that how the tunnel is been constructed what type of an outcrop you can see there okay now this strike okay this is with respect to thickness first case is with respect to thickness second case is with respect to dip and strike all these cases now the third case is with respect to folding one so anti clean so this one low pressure is the medium so when this type of there at the center there will be no pressure remember that whereas here in the syncline high pressure will be there at the middle and one more thing here due to this type of formation what happens is the water might get stored okay so if you construct a tunnel in a syncline region it will be lot of difficulties you will may obtain if you construct a tunnel in anti cline region it will be easy for construction remember that okay whenever you constructing a tunnel if you get an anti cline region construct that a tunnel it will be very easy and remember that the pressure will be at the sides okay and the in between there won't be any pressure itself whereas coming to the anti cline there will be huge pressure at the center so huge pressure at the center it's very much complicated you have to go for higher construction at the center part which will be very difficult for construction itself at the sides you can easily construct the uh, concreting but at the center at the between of the tunnel you cannot go for huge constructions right so it will be difficult in this condition and one more thing what will happen due to this formation is like this ground water get infiltrated in this tunnel in most of the cases so i try to avoid this syncline type of folded rocks remember that if you go for anti cline 
uh, type of folder drops, then it is well and good. So then there is a fault. So if there is a fault, it is clearly unsafe location. Okay. If there is any faults passing through your tunnels, then it is completely unsafe and you cannot construct a tunnel in those regions. Okay. So this is a clear ident uh, indication regarding the site conditions. So now you have already seen what type of site selection for a dam wall. So same thing holds good for a reservoir. Okay, so I'm not going to explain regarding a reservoir. So what is the difference between a dam and a reservoir is that dam, it will store a lot of water when compared to a reservoir, there is a less amount of water is stored. The same conditions are applied. Only thing, the difference is that water table line is different when compared to a dam and a reservoir. So that difference you have to study. I will be uploading the notes in the Google Classroom. Then there are two more topics. So construction of a roads and construction of a bridges. So those topic also is very easy with respect to the same dip outcrop and the bedrock. So depending on that, how to locate which is the better part for construction of the road, which is the better region to construct a bridge. So those things also I'm not going to explain because it's an easy concept. Okay. So with respect to tunnels and uh, uh, dams, if you get an idea, so with respect to bridges and roads also, it will be very easy. Okay. And I will be uploading the same in the Google classroom. So the last topic is coastal engineering and its consideration. There are few easy points. What do you mean by coastal engineering? So coastal engineering is nothing but in these regions, in Udupi, Mangalore region, the coastal bed, okay, complete South India side. Okay, in those regions, we have to consider the oceanic part. Due to the oceanic waves, there will be a lot of things which is happening. And what are the considerations we are going to consider for our uh, construction that is for civil engineering purpose and how it will be affecting we are going to see so those things i have written in the, the slides okay so go through that slides and if you don't understand anything you can contact me okay so here i am ending this session remember that i have completed the fourth module now okay so the fourth module all these topics are uh, completed okay such a aspects are outcrop dip strike folded faults joints and unconfirmed influence in their engineering projects like dams, tunnel, slope treatment, that is ground improvement technique, recognition of structure in the field of type classification, the rock quantity determination, rock structure rating, okay, characterization, dam foundation, rock foundation treatment, okay, reservoir grouting, grouting, rock reinforcement, tunnel, basic engineering I have already given you, okay, coastal line engineering and the consideration. Now, according to your syllabus, the bridge as well as the roads are not there, that's why I'm not explaining the PPT, but I have given you in the notes. Okay, so that you will get a general idea. Only tunnel and dam are there. That is what I have presented in the presentation also. Okay, so let me end this session here. Now you people can leave. Leaving the diploma students, others can leave the session.